What's up everyone, Technic here. In today's video, I'll be teaching you how to fully set up RetroArch. And I will also be admitting that I was wrong when it comes to setting up RetroArch. So let's go ahead and get started with the video, shall we? Now before I get started with this video, I would like to point out that I was actually wrong in my previous video when it came to the Vita DB downloaded tutorial and I also showed myself downloading RetroArch and everything. So previously I said that even though it was a 40 minute uh, download that this is the wrong way to install RetroArch. However, one comment did point out to me that no, this you can just change the UI in it. I'll actually post their comment up right now. Um, but they were completely right. This is actually the best way to install RetroArch in 2023. Even though it does take about 45 minutes for the full download to be done, and I'm not joking when I say that, it takes 45 minutes to download RetroArch from Vita DB Downloader. However, it installs it correctly and with every single UI change that you need. So I'm gonna refer to my previous video on how to install Vita DB Downloader and RetroArch. And then we're going to go ahead and proceed to RetroArch right now so you can change the settings. Now for fear of not making the same video twice, uh, please refer to my last video on how to set up your ROM folder and how to download RetroArch. This video is going to be all about teaching you how to use RetroArch. Let's go ahead and go into RetroArch and I'm going to teach you a little bit of things about it. As far as RetroArch goes, it does take 45 minutes to download, but once it is downloaded, it is in fact fully set up correctly and there's no file moving that you have to do on your end from the PC like you had to do in the past. Once you load it up, it's going to load up just fine. And when this loaded up initially, I thought that something was wrong with it, but I didn't realize that RetroArch had its own u user interfaces or UIs. So that's what confused me in the beginning and that com the person in that comment was totally right. You can absolutely change every single user interface. Now, there's only about four user interfaces, but that's okay. But I'm gonna show you how to change it in this video right now. And I'm gonna show you the four user interfaces that you can use and which one is my personal favorite. Go ahead and scroll to settings and then press right and scroll all the way down until you see something that says user interface. And remember, the confirm button in RetroArch is going to be the circle button, not the X button. It doesn't matter what region your game is from. So go ahead and press the X button to go into user interface. You're going to see a few things, but the main one you need to worry about is the menu. As you can see, the, this is the selection for the user interface menu. The current user interface that is being shown right now is called Ozone. I'm going to show you the differences between all four user interfaces. So for starters, I'm going to go ahead and select another user interface. To select a new user interface, you're going to scroll all the way up or all the way down to the desired user interface that you want to select. And after that, you hit the circle button, which it'll back out into the other menu. And as you can see, it says GLUI. This is the user interface that I chose. All you want to do is back out to the main menu and then scroll up to main menu and select the option that says restart RetroArch. Now, this restart does take a little bit of time, but at the same time, it's also setting up a brand new user interface. So the user interface that you're going to see pop up on the screen right now is called GLUI. And I'm going to show the other three user interfaces as well. As you can see, GLUI is kind of a side scrolling kind of three menu type setup. So it's kind of more of a simplistic setup to RetroArch. You can press the right button or the left button to select all three three different menus and it's honestly just really simple and really cool uh, it's not my favorite but some people really do like this one now this next user interface is called rgui this one is a little bit more difficult to navigate through or at least it looks like that looks like that is the case but in actuality it's pretty simplistic and everything is kind of laid out in its own one main menu so a lot of people personally do not like this one just because of how it looks, but I think it's pretty cool because it's reminiscent of an old arcade cabinet, but this is also not my favorite uh, menu either. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and get into what my favorite user interface is and what I think is the one that you should be using because it is very simple, it's very cool looking, and it's reminiscent of a very cool user interface that probably a lot of you know and love. Now this is the last and best user interface in my opinion. This is called the XMB and primarily I will be teaching you how to do everything on RetroArch from this menu and this menu only because it's a lot easier to work with. So if you scroll to the right and see something that says scan directory, this is actually how you find your ROMs inside of your UX0. If you were to click on scan directory, you can actually select your UX0 and then you can find your respective ROM folder. So this will be the first step for you to set up your ROMs inside of RetroArch before you do anything else. As you can see, you can click on the folder itself and then you can go to scan directory or you can just scroll up and go to scan this directory. Me personally though, I scan the entire ROM folder and then I'm good to go after that. Now, depending on how many ROMs that you have, it is dependent on how long the scan will actually take. For the purpose of this video, I will be loading in Pocket Monster Crystal version and just so there's no bad blood between me and Nintendo, I'll be actually showing you that I do own a copy of this game. Now after the scan is done, all of your ROMs will appear and for demonstration purposes, I will be going into this ROM because I showed you that I do own this ROM and a lot of the other ROMs in here. After you initially select one ROM, it's going to actually make you select your core which is your core emulator and nine times out of ten is going to be the very first core that you that's on the list that appears so just do me a favor and pick the first one and afterwards it'll kind of back you out of the menu and let you run it again however the main thing that I did want to teach you about is the emulator quick menu so as you can see the ROM loaded up just fine but do me a favor and press the L, R, select, and start button. After you press those four buttons at the same time, it will take you to what's called the RetroArch Quick Menu. Now in this Quick Menu, there's gonna be several essential functions that you can do. You can resume your ROM, restart your ROM, you can close your ROM to select a new ROM, you can do what's called a save state where you can save your progress inside of your ROM and you can also do a load state where you can load the progress inside of your ROM. So the save state slot is kind of a slot for whatever save state that you want to do and you can press the left and right button to select it. The save state function is as I said before, you can save the progress of your ROM. Uh, and this is just another way to save the progress of your ROM but basically this is how you save anywhere inside of that ROM so you don't necessarily have to use the same menu that's built inside of that ROM you can save it basically from anywhere I wanted to kind of point out the importance of this quick menu because not a lot of people actually know about the quick menu inside of uh, the RetroArch user interface so they built this into it so you can kind of quickly get into it with the four button combination and remember the four bu button combination is going to be your L button, your R button, your select button, or your start button. This kind of goes the same for if you're playing on a PlayStation TV or using any controller. So let's say you're using a PlayStation 3 or a PlayStation 4 controller. It's actually going to be the L1 button, the R, R1 button, the select button or the start button for PlayStation 3. And for the PS4 controllers, it's going to be the L1 button, the R1 button, the share button, and the start button. And that's all there is to it when it comes to RetroArch. And first off, I'd, I'd like to apologize because I wanted to make this video for a very long time. But at the same time, there was a lot of stuff going on uh, as far as like family-wise and everything, which I still have to take care of. So I'm happy to be back and to be making videos again. And there's going to be several videos dropping within this entire week and uh, weekend. So this is Technic. Thank y'all for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video.